Tell your neighbor, get ready for the word. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. And there was famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. Can I get another translation to that? Genesis 12, 10. Let's look at the word grievous, where that there can be other translations that can help us. All right. Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. All right. Are we there, Tim? Good, 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 good. Genesis 12, 10. So let me say, at that time, a severe famine struck the land of Canaan, forcing Abram to go down to Egypt, where he lived as a foreigner. So he calls this one severe famine. All right. Let's look at another translation. Change the translation. Change the version. Change the version. By the way, is that Gloria? Uh, uh, Gloria, is that you? Or it looks like you? Wow. Miracle. No, they tire Jesus. Plenty. I'm telling you, I didn't recognize that. It's amazing. You're welcome. Now, NIV. Now there was famine in the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was what? Severe. Those of you who are joining online, you are welcome. I acknowledge your presence. Be there and be faithful. Another translation Message Bible. Message Bible. Message Bible. What does it say? Message and amplified. So let's look at. Any one of them first. Message amplified. Anyone that comes first. Now there was a famine in the land and Abraham went down to Egypt to live temporarily. For the famine in the land was oppressive, intense, and what? Grievous. Message Bible, what does it say? Oppressive famine, intense famine, and grievous. Hmm. Message Bible. Then a famine came to the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt to live. It was a hard famine. It was a hard famine. We are living in a time that for most of us is an unprecedented time. We are living in a time where we can say of the truth that the famine seems to be severe, hard, grievous. We are living in a time where there is confusion in the land. In fact, if you check the word famine, all right, in the Bible, all right, the Hebrew word for it actually calls it hunger. Hunger. That's the root word for it, hunger. It calls it a famish. Famished, which means to be, to be or make very hungry or weak. That's the word famish. That's the word for famine. A time of Famished. In other words, a time when people become very hungry and they become weak. It calls it starvation. When people are starving, then it calls it hard times. Season of hardship. That's the word, hardship. It calls it hardship. So you realize that when we talk about famine, we are talking about season of hardship, starvation. We are talking about a time that people are suffering. Because that's another word for famine. Suffering. Suffering. It, we, it, we are also talking about hunger. A season where people cannot afford basic food. Or people are becoming hungry. So the Bible said that there was famine. There was hunger. There was hardship. There was, there was what? Suffering. And another word, starvation in the land. Abraham went down to Egypt to live. It was a hard time. Now listen, but in the same scripture, in the first and second verse, you realize that God called Abraham and said, I will bless you. I will bless you and through you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Then when you then look at it away, after from verse 1 and 2, the next thing we are reading here is that there was famine, that the man who was blessed had to run away, to go and live somewhere temporarily. There could, 
Or there can be global famine. But there is no famine that attacks a nation or a global famine that God does not know about. There are different reasons why famine can happen. Some are man-made. When people become greedy, like in the children of Israel, God told them that, hey, till your land for 69 years. Then on the 70th year, leave the land. Nobody should walk. And at times they tell them, walk for six years, then seventh year, let the land rest. And they were not obeying their principles. And God had to send them away from that land. That was, you know, when you read Jeremiah, one of the sins that the children of Israel committed was that they did not obey the law of rest. That walk for, till the land for this period, and um, let the land rest. But they refused. So, even God can allow famine in order to just bring economic reset. We are going to get there later. But the thing is this. Regardless of the reason or the cause of the famine, the faithfulness of God endures through all season. Now, what is happening, I need to first make you understand that it's not peculiar to Nigeria. It's a global phenomenon. If anybody tells you that what is happening is because of Tinobu or Boari. The person is not knowledgeable. Nigeria it, it own is even better. Oh, yes. <laughs> what we are experiencing currently in Nigeria cannot be compared to what is going on in other nations of the world this very time. So, for instance, let's look at it. I will give you some data. Nigeria current inflation is 29.9. And let's talk about inflation. Let me make inflation, the word inflation, as simple as possible so that you understand what inflation is. Inflation typically means that the prices of commodity is going up where, where, when what people are earning is not increasing. So there is inflation, for instance, if you are buying a, um, a bag of rice for 17,000 naira. Meanwhile, you are earning 30,000 naira. Now, the bag of rice is 34,000 naira, but you are still earning your 30,000 naira. Do you understand? Then the bag of rice becomes 80,000 naira, but you are still earning your 30,000 naira. Do you understand? So, people purchasing power is reducing while the prices of goods keep skyrocketing. So, for instance, if you then hear that, oh, maybe the current inflation rate in the country is 20%. Then they now tell you that, oh, we are projecting that the inflation we go to, uh, the inflation rate for this year will be 40%. What that is simply telling you is that from 20% to 40%, inflation rate, that's 100%, right? It means that if you were buying a bag of rice when the inflation rate was 10 naira, now that they say that the inflation rate will go to 40%, then you, how, 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 what do you think will happen to the bag of rice? Like by how many percent margin? 100 naira. No. You buy buying the bag of rice for how much? 10 naira. Then it, 100% of 10 naira is what? 20 naira. So that means that year, the, if the inflation rate has now increased by 100%, that means the prices of goods in, during that season is likely to go up by 100%. So the 20 naira or the 10 naira bag of rice will go to about what? But you see, the earning of the people mostly doesn't change because the factors that are causing the increase is not affecting income. It's not making people up also to, to be able to pay more. So companies are not able to increase pay the way... So people actually rate bites hard. Now... I will advise you in the month of April, as we are going to start our business service, change maker service in the month of April, please, if you're in this church, I want you to really take it serious. Because like some of the things I'm saying, and most of you don't understand it or you don't know it. Now, that business service, you cannot be in that business service for six months and your financial level is not getting better. Because some of the things we'll be teaching you and the people we'll be bringing for that 730 service is to help empower us in this season. We don't have something like that before in the history of our church. That we are having a service 7.30 to 9 dedicated to empowering business people. This little one I have done, I have not done official one. I just call it Change Maker that has been happening uh, less than three months now um, after service. At least by the grace of God, I can boast that at least I've had three people 
all right, at, at least maybe two, the one bought two properties, the other one, number one, under 35, who have said, Pastor, I'm buying my property, this one that I bought two, I'm, I'm buying one. That is what I want to hear. So, in, because why? In that place, since January, I've been telling them, this is what to do, 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 you know. And today now, I'm even having three weeks crash course to empower those in that group, all right? So, you can be part of it, but it's just that it takes place after the service. And uh, so, um, to tell them what to do. And I'm glad by the grace of God that nobody who has been going through that training can say as of today that they have not made more money this year. Unless they don't. I, I'm telling you, there is nobody who has been joining that training who has said that they have not gotten richer this year. All those of you who are in change make true or not true. Because I told them, you see, because the great mistake you can make is that you are focusing on the dollar. That is not your problem. The problem is that you don't know what to do when inflation is going up. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to let you know that we, are, we have to engage and raise our capacity. And the reason why I'm saying uh, under 35 is not because those who are above 35 cannot join or be part of it. But because that group, you know, that's the most productive aspect of your life that you must have some foundations in place. So I just need to say that. But so currently, Nigeria inflation rate is about 29.9. That's even what is projected to be this year, 2024. But let's look at some other countries. Venezuela, Venezuela inflation rate is 189%. Nigeria is 29, Venezuela is 189%. Sudan, 71%. Argentina, 211%. Zimbabwe, 193%. Turkey, 64.8%. Currently, Nigeria Naira exchanged to the dollar at an at, at average of 1,600 in the parallel market. But Nigeria is not the worst. I'm just trying to let you know that we are still better where we are than most countries. Now, let me give you some countries. Iran. The Iranian rate to the dollar is 514,000. 514,000 to $1. Our own is 1,000 what? 600. Iran. 514,000 to $1. Vietnam's dong is 24,469 to $1. 24,469 to one dollar. Syria loan, 20 Syria loan Leon, that's the name of the currency, is 22,418 to a dollar. 20 it's like saying 22,000 naira to one dollar, God forbid. <laughs> 22,418 Leon to a dollar. Then Lao, Lao Shan Ki, is 20,594 to US dollars. Indonesian rupiah, Indonesia is 15,502 to a dollar. Then Uzbekistan sum, that is 12,335 12, to a dollar. So you see that we are still better. So can you see somebody, for instance, in Iran, here in Nigeria, say, Ah, that, those Nigerian, there is 1,000 seats. They are enjoying, you know. No, what we call suffering, somebody in Iran, will, is it, Argentina, financial crisis has gotten worse so much so now they say that they want to abandon their currency to adopt U.S. dollar as their own, American dollar as their official currency. That's what the new president is saying he wants to do that we want to adopt. In Zimbabwe, if you carry 50 million Zimbabwe currency, you are only buying a bread. 50 million, you are only buying a bread. Not 50,000, 50 million. You are only going to buy a bread. So is Nigeria worse? Is Nigeria better? So you first need to understand this when it comes to some of the current economic challenges that we are facing. Now, like I've been telling the chain maker group, there's a way you can approach economic crisis. There are two ways to deal with your problem, any problem in life. Let me show you something. Number one, how people deal with problems and challenges is this. Some, I'm assuming that my iPad is the problem, no matter the challenges. So some... They carry that problem and they, use it, they face it like this. 
So because of that problem, they are not seeing anything again. This is the only thing they see. The problem. This is the worst way to handle your challenges in life. To so carry it and put it like this. Number one, this will make you more worried. Number two, it makes life darker for you. Number three, it makes you lose this opportunity. Because whilst you are looking at the problem, opportunities will be passing you by, but you can't see it anymore because of the problem. But there's a better way to handle your problem. The problem is still there, but you put it like this. You put it like this. No matter the problem you're handling, put it like this. Why? Because you are acknowledging that, yes, there's a problem, but at the same time, I don't want to miss any opportunity because of the problem. Currently now, people are shouting about dollar, 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 dollar. But I can tell you, in the midst of this dollar crisis, our young people in church have become richer. This is not Yahoo. And that's why I told them, maybe we should do a program called Why Yahoo When You Can Make Legit Money. Oh yeah, I told them, maybe we should do a program like that. Because in the midst of it, just having access to some current situation, data analysis, between January and today, they've been able to look at the same situation and they could see opportunity all around. Let me say this to you. Some of you, if you don't make it now, you may not make it again. Because you see, in Nigeria right now, there are opportunities everywhere. The dollar, dollar, even the paper seller is crying dollar. Because you have to import it from Kaduna. Are you there with me? So in this series that I'm starting today and in the next three weeks, what I will be sharing with you are principles that you need to engage to prosper in our times. Principles that you need to engage in in order to prosper in our times. Because you see, our times are not peculiar to Nigeria. It happens in any nation. But in the midst of it, there are those who go down and there are those who go up in that season. It is my prayer for you that in this season, you will go up. I said, it is my prayer for you that in this season, you will go up. Amen. Somebody shout it louder, Amen. amen. So let's look, look, quickly look at some key principles for prospering in our times. I will start with the spiritual one before we move to the contemporary one. Because there is not only spiritual, but because we are Christians and we are children of God, we must always start from the spiritual then to other factors. Engineer, it's good to see you. Oh, welcome from Canada. Our sky is Canadian dollar. It's there in the world. The snow, because you are looking fresh. I hope you have bought dollar offering to church. So, uh, treasury team, if you see dollar, um, let me know. It's from engineer. The first principle that we need to engage in to prosper in our time is, number one, obedience to God's commandments. Obedience to God's commandments. And I will tell you why this is an important principle. In fact, today, this is the only principle I want to give to you. Obedience to what? God's commandments. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delight greatly in his what? Commandments. Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be what? Blessed. Now look at verse 3. Can we read verse 3 together? Wealth and riches shall be where? In his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. So you see, keeping the commandments of God guarantees one thing is called wealth and riches wealth and riches not poverty now when things become so hard in the season of famine 
one of the things you begin to see is that people begin to cut corners. Recently, they, they, they arrested some people that they were frying Popov with transformer oil. Yes, I've never heard of it before. I didn't know that transformer have oil. So what they were, in fact, since that I said, don't buy Popov again. No. In fact, since when I heard it, I, I am very careful where I, I purchase anything that is called fried. Transformer oil. Transformer oil was what they were using to fry their pop-off. One of our sisters in church told me of another person uh, somewhere at Meron area there, all right, that this one will go to a church to buy fats. Melt the fat. Use the fat to fry things that she's selling. So the, the thing that people were eating or are eating from her or buying from her are made from, uh, she's using fat from animals, all right, to fry those things. Because you see, their excuse is this, things are so hard, we must make money and then we have to cut corners. I am here to submit to you today that regardless of the hardship, fight to be upright. Fight to be upright. In Genesis chapter 4, Jesus fasted for 40 days. And the devil realized that this man must need food. So he came to meet Jesus. Oh God, cut corner now. Cut corner. Turn this. Since God is not provided for you, provide for yourself. This past week, I did a transaction with um, a, um, a bank and a friend of mine who, was, who works with the bank. I needed to change some dollars. And, both, and it was over a transaction. You know, I've shared. And for whatever reason, they gave me the Naira equivalent, but they never debited my, my dollar accounts. For whatever reason. So as I was there, <laughs> mm -hmm. as I, I checked my account, and I see the balance, I've seen the Naira, and this is not a small money. Somebody told me, maybe this is how God wants to provide for the church building projects. <laughs> You've not been there before that somebody will forget money in your hand and all of a sudden there is something beginning to justify why that thing should be your own. Ah, God said that we, should, we will eat the wealth of the Gentiles. Come and see the devil preaching to me yesterday. You know, and you know, for whatever reason, that, you know, this is the second time this year. Okay, it happened to me last year. I said one of you last year. I had to return some money to bank, millions. Now again, me, I'm on my own. No? They brought it again. And the devil said, ah, help it now. God, we say, we, you know, we need money. And we, oh, we really need money now. We need money. Because we've not finished our building project. We are starting school projects. So our church really needs money. Because two things are happening. Oh, and we are saying by July, help the thing. Because if we, like, if we don't do the school before July, a lot of you will not bring your children for the new time. And we want to bring your children. What do you think? Wow. If you don't patronize at your church, we will use it to preach. Ah, we used to. I will call your name out on social media. Like, yeah, remember, Richard, you are not bringing your child to school. Who should believe in the school if you are not believed? <laughs> but you know, yesterday, that as I was there, scriptures upon scriptures, everything. I was even telling me, maybe I should call Lady P and explain because Lady P, she's not for that kind of a thing at all. But you know, I said to myself, God does not provide to stealing. God does not provide true what? I will return their money by Monday if they don't come. I will return it. I will call them. You have not debited my account. Let them go and sort it out. When there is hardship, things become harder for those who cut corners. Because... Is 
not a justification for you to be a sinner. Jesus said to the devil, man shall not live by bread alone. I would rather drink water than to cut corner. I would rather drink water than to what? Cut corner. Obedience to his command in the season of hardship. Because you see, it can only get harder on earth. Heaven is the same. Things don't get better or get worse in heaven. God is the peak of all things. Is somebody with me? Why is the room so quiet? If you have been cutting corner, God is showing you mercy. Yeah, we, you can. You are here, you can. But it's time to repent. It's time to repent. Don't justify stealing. If they forgot money in your hand, return it. It's not your money. It may be hard, but it's not your money. Sometimes you, you, when you are returning the money, then you are praying that, Lord, let them just say, take it. Uh, have you been there that before? Lord, as I'm returning this money. Mm. <laughs> so, it's your money. Yeah, God bless you. It's not... about what they are Is somebody with me? Is somebody with me? Let's take a case study. Does keeping the commandment of God really leads to prosperity in times of famine? We will take a case study of Elijah. So follow me to first Elijah. First Kings 17. Let's read from verse 1. There now. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was one of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As Lord, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be what? Deal nor rain these years, but according to my word. Hmm. Interesting. So this is a case where God himself decided to cause famine in a nation. Why? Because they were now violating God's principles. Violating the commandments of God. So verse 2, we are going to do some exegesis or some verse by verse of this. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, now remember that he has declared what will happen. Now God is now, now the famine is about to begin. So God is now telling the man what to do. So, and the word of the Lord came to him saying, verse 3, get thee ends and turn the eastward and do what? Hide thyself by where? The brook of cherry. That is where? Now let's, let's first, let me explain what is happening here first. The first thing is that the man of God, when he declared famine, the first thing that happened was that God took his prophet away from the midst of the people. Why? So that they will not have direction and the word of God in that season of famine. One of the things that can happen during the midst of famine is when you no longer have prophetic direction. Why did God withdraw Elijah from the system? Because he knows that when Elijah is there, all right, people can persuade him to tell them what to do. So in the midst of famine, it is time to stay connected with your spiritual lineage. You see, the way you are coming to church right now, hearing the word of God, is one of the ways that God blesses and sustains people in times of hardship. Because God will never leave his own as long as his own remains faithful. Are you with me? 
Why? Because God says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, he said, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall what? Prosper. Last week I was, um, we were at a place. There's a man in, on Arise TV or Channels TV, um, I won't mention his name, that does investment analysis. I told people to go and watch just to learn. So, he does investment advice, stock forecast. This one will gain down. But as our last two weeks, we were, I was with some of our leaders in church. We were, we were just staying and refreshing ourselves together. Then I showed them something on Twitter. Somebody was abusing the man. That, Why is he not talking now? Because all the investment forecasts he had made this year, all of them did not go well. MTN lost about 750 billion. Quite a number of companies posted loss, loss. So, of course, it will affect their shares. So, I told the people, I said, bring this one out. Then look at the one I have been telling you people to do since January. Because when we saw that thing, I told them, no, don't invest in this way. Invest in this way because this is how this thing is going to be. Because if you pay attention to inflation, and you understand those figures, for instance, as a business person, there is a limit to what the telecommunication can do in terms of increasing how much they charge us. They can't just come up with it now to call per minute is 20 naira or 100 naira because they are being regulated. So they can't just increase. So meanwhile, in that sector, a lot of them power their mass with diesel. So the cost of diesel as it's going up, will be telling on their business. Number two, a lot of what they use is imported. The communication gadgets are not produced in Nigeria, they are imported. That means maintenance cost will also what? But does that mean that there will be more subscribers? So, you know, we, I said, go, those who are in my investment team knew that I never advised those stocks. Even, so I said, do you see the difference between the two? And they were all happy that, yes, you know, we can all be smiling in that room. That, thank God, you know, we, we are going higher when this is not going the same. But I'm saying that to let you know that God is still in the business of using servants of God and his institution of the church and spiritual principle to cause his people to prosper in the midst of famine. And I'm declaring over you, in the name of Jesus, that in this season, the hardship of the land, you will escape it. I am also declaring over you today that in this season you will experience the mighty move of God turning things around in your favor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, those who believe it, shout a louder amen. amen. The next thing you will see in that second chronicles, um, that um, fucking 17, first king 17 is that verse 3, still stay with verse 3. The Lord told him to withdraw. No, verse, verse 3, verse 3, please follow me, guys. And he said, Turn thee eastward, and I thyself by the brook cherish. If you go and do some investigation on, um, you, over the scripture, you realize that where God told him to go to was a place that was not habitable, it was an inhospitable place, it was a place that was cut off from natural access. So already, there was famine. In the midst of the famine, God did not tell him to go to Jerusalem. God did not tell him to go to where natural opportunities were. But rather, God now told him, go deeper into a place and stay in a place where human help cannot reach you. Well, why would that God do that? Because normally, God should have told him to go to where the banks are. Go to where you... Where where, the, where you can, Jerusalem, where the, at least the richest people reside. Go and live around the king's palace. But God told him, go eastward and I thyself, not even make yourself open. I thyself by the brook cherry. Listen to me first and foremost. Regardless of the situation in the land, God does not want you to turn to a beggar. Number two, 
Regardless of the famine in the land, the greatest mistake you can make is to begin to look up to man and not God. God said we drill from men into a place where natural help cannot even reach you. Now, God is not saying to him now, hide yourself. The question is, how will he survive? That is the place of supernatural provision. It's called supernatural because it's paranormal. It's not normal. It's called supernatural because it's mysterious. It's called supernatural because it's, it's only orchestrated by God. I am praying for you that in this season, you to be witness supernatural and around. Yeah. Father, those who believe and are saying amen, let it happen practically. Natural turn around. Yes. Don't go and hide yourself. Place that is not conducive. Verse 4. Are you following the particular steps? And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. Pause and think about it. He's been drinking from pure water. Drinking from five of her life, drink from ever water. But, but God said, and do you know one of the things that causes people to suffer in the season of famine is that they know what God said, but no longer knows what God is saying. There, there's a difference between the two. Before now, Elijah had been drinking from another place. Before now, before the season of famine, the, Elijah has been drinking from his own well. But now God said, change the way you drink. Start drinking to survive this season. There's a new commandment. Start drinking from this place.
went again. He thought it was a joke. This time around, God added a thing. He put, it may be like a goosey, so he put the fish inside pepper soup. Then roasted the pork meat and make it barbecue. Barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. And for the third time, God brought the thing down. Peter looked at it and still refused to eat it. Go and read. The last great thing that Peter did, the last great ministry that of Peter ended in chapter 12. Paul took over from there. He was replaced. Because he has, he has not developed his capacity for new things. He had not developed his capacity to undo new vision, new revelation. In this season, you see, when things become so hard, one of the ways God shows faithfulness to his own people is to begin to give them new ideas. But some of them stereotype mindsets, and this is how we have been doing it, will make them not to enter into that season, and another person will replace them. You see, ideas are like wings. It flies. Have you ever been there that you had an idea and you didn't execute it there? You see somebody else doing the same thing. Has it happened to you before? Because you see, every time an idea drops, it's not only you. Kenneth Egan said one day God told him to write a book. And God said, you are the number 10 person I'm telling to write this book. If you don't write it, it will move away from you. But as for the book, it will be written. Only that you will not be the one to write it. Some of you have been doing your business in a certain way for over 15 years. All right? Now, this season has come. You are still doing it that way. And you are complaining that customers are not coming. I know. Maybe it's time to add something to it that you have not been doing before. You have to say, Lord, I thank you for what you have said before, but what are you saying now? What is God saying now? Because if you are a child of God, regardless of the famine, God has made a way of escape for you. He has made a way of escape for you. I told my team, you know, I run a computer firm on the island. Last year, when I sat down with them, I said to them, next year, things are going to be very tough. So we have to change the way we do business. Normally, we, there are some normal things we use to repair cost, cost, um, some things before. We, we use some of those tools. I, we researched. So we have to become better equipped to begin to repair things. So we have to move in a way we have not moved before in 15 years. So we sat down with them in that thing and began to research. So we now saw some equipment that can make our job faster. Equipment that can magnify some ICs and help them help us see it well. Magnify like microscopic one then it will bring it. Then things that can help us change chips and those things. It costs a lot of money. A lot of money. I said, we must buy it. We must buy it. We must buy it. Then I told them, fine protocol will not allow me to say some other things, but you know, I told them, we must move this way. We must move that way. We must move this way. We must move that way. That decision that we took in that meeting to add some one, two, three from what we have been doing over 15 years ago helped that team and that company to move up higher a bit. I said to them, this is not the time for you to in buy this type of product. But this is the time to move the money into this direction. Because this is where the customers will be coming. I'm glad I can, if not that maybe I don't have permission. One of my sisters invited me to their shop to come and pray about three weeks ago during 30 days fasting and prayer. As I got there, they said, business is not moving pastor. We want to pray. But as I entered the place, I looked. I said, I'm not going to pray. It's not prayer you need now. I will come back and pray. But in this place, then I told them, have you done your SWOT analysis? I said, what's called SWOT analysis? I said, who are your top three competitors in this area? They don't know. What are they doing? They don't know. I said, you know what, I would, what you need to do for me? I'm not going to pray for you. Get somebody that is not known to you. Let them go into this area and find out the three people that are doing well in this same business. What are they doing? Get their secret. Then ask yourself, how can you do it better than them? They obeyed. This was February or so. They've not, we've not, they've not even finished though. 
So when they came back, say, Pastor, it's true. We saw this person. This is what they are doing. This is how they are doing it. We saw that one. This is what they are doing. This is how they are doing. I said, now, we, we then, that information then helped them to sit down to come up with something that can be better than those people. They have not even finished the official relaunching which they want to do. But about two Sundays ago, the pastor, business is getting better. Oh, it's getting better. That is what I want to hear. When they want to deceive you, they will tell you that everything is the devil. Everything is prayer. Prayer has its place. But also, mind has its place. If God does not want us to think, then he will not have given us brain. Brain is not death to just sit down there. God gave us brain so that we can also think our way through situations. I don't know how the hardship has been affecting you. But it's time to begin to ask, Lord, what am I supposed to do now? There are sectors of the economy that will close down. There are jobs that will no longer be relevant. Take it from me. If, for instance, some of these telecommunication companies continue to make loss, do you think that they will be able to pay salary? How can you make a loss of over 750 billion? If it, that happens year after year, that means those in that sector, what will happen to them? Now, those, for instance, now let me give you an instance out of George, where there is danger even when there is peace. In a sector where, for instance, let, permit me to just use MTN because that's the name. MTN makes 750, for loss of 750 billion. Watch. You are in that sector. Maybe you don't work with MTN. You work with some of the lower ones. But there are in, in a lot of chain reaction, all right, and there are other supporting companies to MTN. The one who supplies diesel, the one who supplies this one, the one who's, you know, they are tied to that. God forbid, I'm just talking about as an economics now right now, that next year again, MTN then post another loss. They will have no choice but to begin to downsize. Watch. If MTN downsize, maybe you, you are working with iPad Communication Limited. It simply means there will be more people in the labor market who will be looking for a job and the job has not increased. Then it means iPad Communication Limited, even though you are working there. If I were you, I would begin to sit tight. Knowing fully well that iPad Communication Limited can get better people than some of its existing staff at the same amount because they don't have a job where they are coming from. So you see that employers during that season can afford to sack and rehire because they know that there are more talents in the system for them because as the big, big companies are downsizing, those, it means that there will be more people with experience in the market. So it is time for them to take advantage of that situation and let go of those who don't have experience. And you, you are still in iPad Communication Limited, going to work every day. In times of peace, you are not preparing for war. You don't know that there's something happens. Say, God, why? It's because you are not thinking well. Pay attention to those things. And if you are a child of God, God will have been speaking to you before it happens. You see, God loves his children. He doesn't want them to suffer. What I'm preaching, are you with me? Don't join the bandwagon of those who are just talking anyhow. Use your intelligence this season. Lord, what must I do? God said to him, drink from the brook. I have commanded, then the next thing is, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. That's where, I, I think we should stop on this one today. You see, if you go and check your Bible, raven, if you check, um, well, in Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 13 to 15, some of the animals that God called abomination animal, unclean animal, this bird is among them. Go and read Leviticus 11, 13 to 15. You see there. He said, look at it. And these are they which you shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are abomination. The eagle, the ostrich, and the osprey, verse 14, is mentioning all the birds, and the vulture and the kite, after his kind, then verse 15, watch, you see the name. Every raven after his kind. So it means normally Jews are not supposed to associate with this kind of bird. But in the season of famine, the bird that God chose to use is the same bird that he said, don't have anything to do with it. 
Do you see how people can miss the will of God for their life? So if, they are, if Elijah had stayed with this, in the midst of famine, he would have missed the move of God. Because ravens is an omnivorous animal. He eats both flesh and plants. And God decided to use the animal that eats flesh and plants to supply flesh and bread for Elijah. It means that in the midst of famine, when God steps into your own life, the most stingy person, God will use it to prosper you. <laughs> Is somebody with me? It means the person naturally does not give. But because God has stepped into your own life, even the most unfavorable situation and circumstances, when God steps in, because it's the hand of God, God will use that situation to prosper you. And I'm saying to you today that this season, it may be called unfavorable season. It may be called season of great inflation. It may be called season of great hardship. But I'm declaring over you, by the word of the Lord, this season will favor you. Ah, the Bible says, where there is a casting down, God said, there is what? A, you shall say, there is a lifting up. Listen to me. The, my Bible made me realize that God is a specialist in using unfavorable situations, unfavorable circumstances, hopeless situations, hopeless circumstances, things that does not even look like opportunity. You see, those are the moment that God shows himself strong because God is not the mate of any man. He does not need the condition to be right before he bless you. He does not need things to be open before he blessed you. In fact, when you look at it, God had to wait until Joseph left the house of Obti, left the house of Mill, left the place where he was Oga, and went into the prison where there was no opportunity. It was that prison God took him to the palace. If Joseph had left from the first house to the palace, forty five it was me that made it happen. It was my circumstances, it was my help. But God had to wait for Joseph to leave the place of opportunity. And when he went out into prison, a situation of famine, then God said, I am God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? God stepped in and from prison, he went into palace. I don't know how things are tough around you right now. I don't know, maybe you've lost your job. I know maybe you've lost your business. I don't mean that they have even short pay you or your salary has been short. I don't know, maybe you are even in Debt. I want to announce to you that in this situation, in this season, God is about to glorify his name. God is about to glorify his name. God will glorify his name. I said God will glorify his name. He had to wait. When they told him that Lazarus was dead and they felt that you should have rushed there, he said he's not dead enough. Jesus told them, he said, Lazarus is not dead enough. Let's wait for him to die well. Because if we step in now, somebody will just say, oh, he had partial heart failure, but he came back. If we step in now, somebody will just say, oh, he did not really die. So it was a scam. So Jesus waited until the situation got worse. Lazarus was dead. Day one, he didn't shake. By day two, he has started selling. By the way, you have said that God will do something. God, it has not. Really got into work. I'm alive. Last come forth. Oh, I don't know what this is right now. I'm alive. But I am declaring to you is your season of a lifting up? Is your season of abundance? It's a season of opportunity. The Bible says, for we know that all things work together for our good. Lift up your hands and this is my season. Oh, say this is my season. Lift your voice and just glorify God everywhere you are. This is the season that God is God. It's the season that God loves. This is the kind of season that God loves. It's a kind of season that God loves to glorify his name. 
where there is no opportunity, where there is no natural help, where there is no thing that can happen naturally. This is where God loves to operate with the help of men. Is God short? God is still God in the valley where there is hopelessness, where things are so tough, when it looks as though nothing can be done. I tell you, if you are in church this morning or you are online, this is the season you have been waiting for. This is the season you have been waiting for. This is the season for the name of God to be glorified. Lift your voice and just bless the name of God. Say, Lord, I thank you because this is the kind of season you like. This is the kind of season that you love. This is the kind of season that your, your name is glorified. This is the kind of season that you like to show yourself. This is the kind of season that brings glory to you. Where things are so hard. Where things look hopeless. Where things look as though nothing can happen. God is God in that season. We can't dwell about our tire. You lift your voice. Shantoria Paka. Is able more than able. Or just pray if you don't know this to accomplish what concerns me today. Oh, he is able more than able. Oh, he can handle everything. That comes my way. He is able, more than able, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to do much more than I could live for me. My God is able. He is able, more than able. To make me what he wants me to be He's able, he's able More than able oh, To accomplish what concerns me today God is able. God is able. God is able. God is able. My God is able. God is able. God is able. God is able. Oh yes, God is able. God is able. God is able. God is able. He is able. God is able. To do much more than I could ever dream. He is able. Oh, 
give you some few minutes to pray. At least about 10 minutes. The Bible says, for we know that my God shall supply all my needs. It is a need. Need. In other words, whatever is needed. Maybe they've increased your house rent now. And you're looking at, where will you pay? How will you pay? They've given you quick notice. <laughs> but you know that to even get a new house is going to be a problem now. Let me say this to you. God is a master of showing himself strong in hopeless situations. In fact, that's what he likes. He likes it to be hopeless. So that men will know that only God has done this. Your testimony is just getting sweeter. Oh, the testimony is just getting sweeter. Oh, yes. God called Abraham at 75. When is the best time for an old man to go to bed? It's not around 50. Around 40, 35. And God called him and the wife, 65, husband, 75, said, I will give you a child. And God said, well, because I am God, I will do it the God way. So the man was 85, no child. 90, no child. 95, no child. 100, where doctors, everybody knows that medically, this is hopeless. God waited. In the midst of hopelessness, he glorified his name. You see, as children of God, when you hear of hardship, hunger, starvation, things that are bringing hopeless, is the kind of season God loves. I can show you a receipt. We got a consultant in 1999. To, no, 2019. To even help us look for where to borrow money from the bank. The man charged us money to help us package proposal for bank to borrow us money. 2018, 2019, no bank borrowed us money to buy land. No bank. The last one was Agada, one finance house. We got all the documents they requested for. They kept us in that AC room for about three hours because they realized that everything they requested for, we have it. But they said that the, the man said, We look at you, your documents are okay. But you will not have the ability to pay. You cannot pay back. After three hours, we've been there for days. 2019. So the consultant said he has done his best. 2020, coronavirus came. Now, a child that could not even, does not have money in 2019. Does not even, we will want to borrow money in 2019 when there was no corona. Now, corona has come. They said church shut down. Business shut down. We are not going out. That was the year we bought our property. We bought it without borrowing. We bought, no, maybe you didn't hear that one. That year, under lockdown, millions of naira, when the church was not opened, 2019, we are still bought, looking for, we bought it without borrowing 50 copper. 50 copper. We do more. Yesterday, I was telling my wife that, ah, God, eh, we didn't know what we were doing. They were right of the truth. Because when I looked at how much we have spent on that building, they said, if we borrow to buy land, are we also now going to borrow to build? God waited until Corona came where, where, where everybody can know. I remember the room. I gathered some people. That John 1, 1 room. Maybe some of you should even be going there to pray. About six of us. I said, I believe God can do this thing. I said, guys, 
I look for those who will not be angry. I say, can we just pray for one more week? I know we've been praying about this thing for a long time. Can we pray one more time? So we decided to fast and pray. We were meeting for vigil in that small first room. And BIM! Money came. I don't know what is hopeless in your life. I don't know what is challenging you. At this junction, even if you want to come and pray on the altar, I will allow you to pray. If you want to kneel down, I will allow you to kneel. Give me Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. My God. Not man. Not man. Man is limited. Man is limited. But God is not limited. This 10 minutes, I want you to pour your heart to God. But my God shall supply all your need. All your need. What is it that you need? Maybe you're online or you're here. I want you to use the next 10 minutes to pray. Lord, intervene. This is the area I need your help. Please supply. Lord, this, is, this situation has become hopeless. Man can do nothing about it. Now I know that you like hopeless situation. You are the God that turns hopeless situation around. Oh God. See, if you can pray, God will do it. You are standing in a place that we have that testimony already. Are you ready to spend 10 minutes to pray? Go before the Lord in the next 10 minutes and pray. Go before him and pray. Go before him and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Pray from the depth of your heart. Whatever is hopeless. Whatever is medically impossible. Financially impossible. Whatever is too difficult to handle, go before the Lord. Pray. Talk to God. My God shall supply all your needs. He's still in the business of making way.
Jesus, God. Yes.